Welcome to the second video in the introduction to number theory series. So last time we defined what it meant formally for one number to be divisible by another, and we proved a little result that we maybe take for uh, granted in our day-to-day -day life, and we established it formally. So this time we're going to look at something called the greatest common divisor and we're going to prove a little theorem which is theorem one in Dudley's book that we're following along with in this course. Uh, so the greatest common divisor of two integers so this is sometimes written as GCD of AB or sometimes uh, the GCD is just dropped and we just write A and B in little round brackets. So that's how it's done in the book we're following. So I guess we'll we'll stick with just the round brackets. So the GCD of, of two integers A and B, this is an integer uh, such that two things uh, need to happen. So it's, uh, it's an integer D such that, so one, I want D to divide A, and I want D to divide B. And I want a second thing to happen in this uh, scenario. If I have some other number C that divides A and divides B. Oh, so one thing I should mention, maybe some of you haven't seen this so up arrow, this little hat thing. This is just a formal mathematical symbol for and. Uh, I may accidentally write it instead of an and symbol sometimes. So just so you know, this is uh, just, just a formal symbol for and that gets used in mathematics. Uh, so anyways, back to condition two. It says if I have some other number that divides A and B, then that means that C is less than or equal to D. Right, so that's where the term greatest, greatest common divisor comes from. Right, so D, it's a common divisor, so that means it divides both A and B. And any other divisor of both A and B, any other common divisor is going to be at most D. So D is the biggest one we can find. So let's look at some examples. Uh, these are two examples that pop up in the book. Let's say I wanted to find the greatest common divisor of 4 and 14. Well, let's look at all the numbers that divide 4, right? The divisors of 4 are 1, 2, and 4 itself. And the divisors of 14 are 1, 2, 7, and 14. So what are the common divisors here? Well, of course, 1 divides both of these numbers, 2 divides both of these numbers, and that's where the list ends, right? And so the largest one that divides both of these numbers is 2. So the greatest common divisor of 4 and 14 is 2. Now, what about the numbers 5 and 15? What's the greatest common divisor there? Well. The only divisors of 5 are 1 and 5. It's what we call a prime number, so its only divisors are 1 and itself. The only divisors of 15 are 1, 3, and 5. So it looks like in this one, right, we have, of course, 1 and 5. Uh, 1 are common divisors, 5 are common divisors, but 5 is the largest one. So the greatest common divisor of 5 and 15 is 5. So now we're going to prove uh, our first official theorem. So let's write theorem. So this is a, an important fact about greatest common divisors that's perhaps going to come up later in this course. So theorem one says that if the greatest common divisor of A and B is D, then the greatest common divisor of A divided by D and B 
divided by d is going to be 1. So this little double arrow thing I've drawn in the middle, uh, this is again is another mathematical shorthand. It just is a, is a short way of saying if what's happening on the left of the arrow, then what's happening on the right of the, uh, the arrow. So in other words here, I'm writing that if the greatest common divisor of a and b is d, then the greatest common divisor of a divided by d and b divided by d is 1. Okay, so why should this be true? Well, that's exactly what a proof is. We need to start with our premise that a, the greatest common divisor of a and b is d. And we need to get to the conclusion on the other side of the arrow. So suppose that d is the greatest common divisor of a and b. And let's just give a name to this other greatest common divisor. We're just going to, to make writing a little bit simpler, we're just going to say that c is some number, it's going to be the number equal to the greatest common divisor of a divided by b, uh, sorry, a divided by d and b divided by d. And well, we want to show that, that this is equal to 1. So in other words, we want to show that c is equal to 1. And the way in which we're going to do this, uh, our, steps, our proof is going to go in two steps. So first, we're going to show that 1 is less than or is less than or equal to c. And then secondly, we're going to show that 1 is greater than or equal to c. Well, if 1 is less than or equal to c, and greater than or equal to c, this would imply that c has to be equal to 1. And that's what we want to show, right? This c here corresponds to this number. So that's going to be our strategy for this proof. We're going to reason out these two things as two separate steps. So the first part, uh, we want to show that c is, uh, for this one, I think we're gonna we're gonna show that uh, c is is greater than or equal to one. Well, notice, right? One, this definitely divides the number a over d. Uh, even though we don't know what a over d is, we know that one divides uh, every single number. So maybe that's uh, a little lemma. If you want, you can prove, uh, say. Put over here, prove that 1 divides, uh, say, x for any integer x. So maybe that's a little exercise you can do if you look up the definition of uh, divisibility in the last video. OK, so we know that 1 divides a over d. We know that 1 divides uh, b over d, right? Because a divides any integer. So this means that 1 is a common divisor of a over d and b over d. Well, since c, we've defined this to be the greatest common divisor, then certainly c has to be at least as big as 1. Maybe it's equal to 1, but if, if it's the biggest and, and 1 is some common divisor, then c definitely has to be at least as big as 1. OK, so we've established the first fact. Now to establish the second one. A little bit trickier. So the greatest common divisor, because it's a common divisor, we know that c divides a over d and c divides b over d. So in other words, if you remember from our definition in the last video, that means there exist integers q 
and R such that C times Q is equal to A over D and C times R is equal to B over D. All right, so for example, in our last video, we showed that the definition, what it means for C to divide A over D meant that there's some number I can multiply C by to give me A over D. So in this case, we're going to call that number Q. And similarly, C divides B over D means that there exists some number R just to give it a name so that C times R is equal to B divided by D. Well, now in both of these equations, here and here, I can multiply both sides by D. And what I'm going to be left with is C times D times Q is equal to A. And uh, C times D, so I'm just putting these in brackets. Um, you'll, it'll, you'll see why in a moment. So C times uh, D times R is equal to B. So what does that mean? Well, that means that uh, C, notice here, we have C times D times Q is equal to A. So by our definition, this means that C times D divides A. And over here, C times D times R is equal to B. So again, by our definition, that means that C times D divides B. And finally, well, that tells us, remember, the, the greatest common divisor of A and B was D, right? And we've just showed that C times D is a common divisor of both A and B. So that means that C times D, since D is the greatest common divisor of A and B, that means C times D has to be less than or equal to D. Now, here's our final trick. So D is a positive integer. So I can divide both sides of this inequality by D. And that leaves me with C being less than or equal to 1. And that's basically the end of the proof, right? Because I've shown, we already showed that C had to be at least as big as 1. And we showed that C could be at most 1. So therefore, here's another bit of mathematical symbolism. Sometimes mathematicians write these three dots to mean therefore. Therefore, C is equal to 1. And that's exactly what we wanted to show, right? C we defined to be the greatest common divisor of A over D and B over D. And the whole thing was to start by supposing A, the common divisor, greatest common divisor of A and B was D, and show that that meant the greatest common divisor of A over D and B over D was equal to 1. And that's what we just did. All right, so next time we're going to talk about the division algorithm. And in the meantime, uh, if you have any comments, questions, concerns, uh, please leave it in the comments section and have a good day.